Uh, good afternoon, everybody, to the Monday afternoon talk presentation at Almost Heaven Star Party. Our speaker this afternoon is Bob Trout from Novak. He's been a member of Novak and an amateur astronomer for about 20 years. Uh, he's spoken many times here for the club. He's an avid astrophotographer, having started in the film era and moved over to digital. Uh, and he's gone through all the pains of that transition. So he's been very effective at being a, an introductory uh, instructor to members of the club and members of the public on what it takes to be an effective astrophotographer. He also has a cloudy night hobby of choral singing <laughs> the church group. Uh, last year he regaled us with uh, uh, a song uh, collection that they had done. The choir uh, sung it. I wasn't, I wasn't singing here with you. <laughs> on the theme of, uh, of astronomy. Yeah. Uh, he also regaled us this, this year with a wonderful trip report from the Strasbourg Astronomical uh, Clock, which is on another video of this series. So Bob is going to talk this afternoon about his adventures in comet processing with Pix Insight, which is a somewhat specialized topic, but it gives some indication of what can be done to improve the, uh, the appearance of comet photography. So with that, please welcome Bob Trout. Thank you, Alan. I love giving talks up here because the people who come here are avid astronomers, first of all, and avid astrophotographers in many cases. And the, there's a great appreciation from the audience of, of what I do. Even if I do a bad job, they still appreciate it. Um, Alan's right, I've been doing this for about 20 years. Started with film, started with hand guiding stars on crosshairs. Um, that's another long story. Perhaps it's a topic of another talk. Working my way through the whole process, I've recently begun the long journey of learning Pix Insight. I'll caution you, I am far from an expert on Pix Insight. I have trouble doing the simplest things in Pix Insight. Every once in a while, I revert to my old behavior and look at Photoshop, work things in Photoshop. But Pix Insight has a special process that I wanted to learn how to use. I love taking pictures of comets, but there's a difficulty with taking pictures of comets. You can see it's a little small here, but if you take a picture of the comet, the comet moves as you take your series of pictures. So if you stack all the pictures that you take, the multiple subs, on the head of the comet, then the, the stars all are shown as moving. And if you stack all your pictures on the stars, then the comet moves. And you can't really get a good picture of both the stars and the comets unless you do some pretty um, amazing things. By using PixInsight, this is a uh, comet Wurtenen. There's a number after that, I don't remember what it is. If you use PixInsight, you, get, you create a picture of the comet with no stars. It automatically processes it in such a way that it just brings out the comet. And then you do the same thing and you subtract that comet from each of these pictures, so you get a picture of just the stars. And once you've done that, then you can superimpose one on the other and you get a nice picture of the comet in the field of stars just as you would see if you had a really big telescope. Um, but that's basically the process I'm going to show you. Now, I'm not going to talk about everything there is to know about PixInsight and processing pictures. The first thing, obviously, do is you got to go out and take your pictures. You calibrate your subframes. You apply your flats and your darks. And that's outside the subject of what I'm going to talk about. It's described well in other les lectures, and it's also described in the book. And you have to register the star, the, the, all the frames that you've taken so that all the stars are basically lined up. At that point, you invoke P Pixel Insight's comet alignment process. And that's what I'm going to talk about. Once you've got all those steps done, then you wind up with a nice picture with, a star, with the stars as pinpoints and the comet as, as, a, as an object in that frame. And then you go through the process of stretching and uh, linearizing it and, and doing all the other fancy stuff that we astrophotographers do to make our pictures look pretty. I'm not going to talk about that. That's, again, a subject that every everybody who uses PixInsight and tries to process astrophotos with it will learn how to do regardless. It has nothing specifically to do with the comet because you're just dealing with the result of your picture. But these are the steps I'm going to talk about. We're going to isolate the comet, pull it out from the star field, and, and basically just have a comet master. We're going to remove that comet master from every single one of the subs that we took, and there's a nice process by which we do that. We're going to integrate the star-only images, the images that you took with the comet removed, integrate those so you now create a star master, and then you have a star master and a comet master. You superimpose one over the other and 
far as this, as this pic uh, um, comet processing is, is, you're done. There may be more to get the picture pretty, but that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to do this in a couple of stages. First thing I'm going to do is show you how graphically, show you how the process works. Kind of give you a little more detail about what I just described. And after I've done that, then I'm going to hopefully, if it works well, give you a demonstration using PixInsight. This particular comet um, that I took, and I'll think of the name of it in a second, the particular comet is, is a couple of years old, but I took about 50 images, about 20 images now that I think about it. That takes a long time to process in real time. So I've chosen about five that are representative. I'll step through the process, show you what, what you do at each step, and hopefully it'll come out pretty good. I ran it before and it seemed to work okay. So um, you have your stars aligned and you have on each sub a picture of the comet. And as it moves across the screen, or as the time goes on you take, as you're taking pictures, it moves across the screen, or across the picture rather. And so what PixInsight asks you to do is identify the first comet, the first comet, the, the, the identify the position of the image, identify the position of the comet in the first image, and then you identify the position of the comet in the last image. Well, each of these subs, each of these individual images have times associated with them. So once it knows the first one, and once it knows the last one, it knows how many pictures there are, and it knows the time that each one was taken. It assumes a linear progression, it, as, it, as you would. It doesn't have to be the same time interval between pictures. It just knows where, where the comet would be at that particular time, because you've told it where the first one is, where the last one is, and it interpolates. So the, the first thing you do is identify the first and last one, and then it aligns all of the subframes on the comet, on the position of the comet. Since it knows where the comet is on each subframe, it just puts those positions in the same place. And so you basically have a single image of the comet. Um, when you align all these, uh, all these subs, you have all those pictures aligned on the comet, but the stars would then be moving. But by aligning them in such a way and rejecting pixels that are not in every frame, the stars are moving in a different place in every frame, it rejects the pixels that have stars in them. It keeps the pixels that are in every frame, which is of course the comet, but it rejects them. So what happens, it integrates the subframes, adjusts the clipping to reject the stars, and basically the stars disappear. And then you, now you've got your comet master. So you can save that, the comet with no stars. In reality, there's usually some residual left. Don't worry too much about it. You can either clone it out later on or just leave it and you'll see how the results are. Sometimes you have to go through this a couple of times to make sure you got your settings right, but that's what happens. So then we start over again. Now we tar start with the original subs that we started with that were, that were star aligned, and we take and remove the image of the comet from each individual sub because we know, where, well, you've got to start and do the, do the uh, first and last again, but because we know where each the comet was in each picture because of the time and the position, it removes them one at a time. But before we integrate these in the process, you have to take the image of the comet and put it in the subtract field. It's a little field that opens up in this process that tells you this is what I want to subtract from all of the different images. So you put the image, the comet master image, in that subtract field. And once you've done that, once you've done that, it basically gets rid of the comet. And so you're left with just the star field, and I hope this works. And it aligns all, then you, then you reintegrate and you align all the stars together and you now have a, a single image of just the stars with no comet. You save that as your star master. So you've got a comet master and you've got a star master. And it's a simple matter of using pixel math to add one image to the other. So you then have the stars with a single comet in it and essentially you're done. That's when you go into the other processes that you use in PixInsight to make it all pretty and sharp and all that kind of stuff. So that's the process, and we'll go through that again in the demonstration. Um, this is a, just a basic description of what I, what I used. You identify the position of the comet, you save and align those images, you save the, the stars that then disappear, and you save that as a comet master. 
using common alignment process again, you subtract these original, you add, you align these original data, you find the location of the comet again, you subtract the comet from each image, and then you have, you align it and you have a star master. Basically just what I said. Before I go on, is there any questions on that, sir? Along the path, where does it It puts it typically at the beginning. Along the path, where does it put your picture is, is, is the question. I'm doing that now, yeah. Along, along the, uh, in your, the question was, where does it put your comet? In the, the line, in the in the in the moving sequence of comets, where does it put it? It typically puts it at wherever the first image that you selected was. Well. And the st well, the start, yeah, the st it's, it 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 superimposes your st your comet master on top of your star master, and it does that at the it puts the comet at the place the comet was when the first picture was taken. I suppose there are ways you can put it somewhere else, but um, I haven't investigated that. So, once I'm finished all that processing, this is Comet Wharton and didn't have much of a tail, but you can see all the stars are pretty, pretty, pretty tight, and then the comet is all in one place. Now, in order to, I'm not going to point this out, there's some, some futz in here from where I tried to clean up the Comet Master with some, with cloning. Um, I didn't do a good job of, so there's a little bit of stuff left there, but that's a, a, for another story, another topic. Okay. I'm about to start the demonstration, but one suggestion I want to make goes back to when you're shooting your subs. You want to make sure that the comet is in a different position, a significantly different position in each sub, so that when you align on the comet, the stars are unique and distinct, that they're not overlapping. Sir? Do you have any the question is, do I have any experience on guiding on the comet itself so that the pictures, the subs that I'm taking, have the comet at the center? The answer is no, I don't have any experience. I use a guide scope, and so I'm just basically looking for a, a suitable star, and I've never tried really to identify the head of the comet in the guide scope. The interesting part of that is with PixInsight, you don't need to do that because it will automatically align, if you tell it to, it will automatically align all the stars. Yeah, I'm sure it is if you can find the comet in your guide scope. Yeah. There are a lot of places I've found from experience in processing, in doing the, in doing the actual steps, that you can get messed up with looking at which set of subs you're doing the process on. And I have wind up, I have to be very careful about naming my, my folders so that it all works. The comment was that SkyX does a pretty good job of allowing you to align, uh, to uh, track, to re register your subs on the comet's head. Um, but for some reason, it has, was having problems using those data to process the, um, the, uh, the, the final picture. Okay, so here's, are any, are any, so um, anyway, my suggestion was wait a pe period of time. I'm guessing the 30 seconds between subs would be an appropriate amount of time. A little longer would be better. It, all, it depends really on how fast the comet is moving across the field of view. If it's a really distant comet and it's moving really slowly across the field of view, you might want to wait a minute or two or longer between subs. If the comet's moving very fast, you don't have to wait very long at all. But what you want is to have each sub, have each picture when they're stacked, have the stars be in separate locations on the, on the stacked image. It makes it easier for them to be rejected when you use the re pixel rejection techniques. Bob, Sir. Question. Do you know, and this is sort of an under the hood kind of thing, is it really doing a special algorithm for the comment, or is this sort of a macro that it's doing pieces of other kinds of processing, like minimum, where the star of the comment is there and then the star is not? I've never seen another, and I don't have that much experience with other pieces of software, but I've never seen a piece of software that does it this way by identifying the location of each comet, of the comet in each of the pictures, and then using that information to subtract the master, the master picture, master comet out of each picture. 
Uh, to me, that's fairly unique. It's not just a simple data processing like a median combine or something like that. Um, it does physically, not physically, electronically, but it does take the position of the comet in each of the subs and removes it. And does each exposure have to be the same duration so the comet appears the same? I would say that's probably a good idea. What I don't understand is how I can integrate all my subs to get a comet master and then subtract that comet master from each of the subs and not be subtracting more signal than the comet has in each sub. I don't understand how it does that, but it seems right, to work. Yeah. Yeah. But you're averaging out the noise more than or you're reducing the reducing the noise. The so Alan's Alan's comment was that you're basically uh, in combining the comet's images, you're not adding the signal. You're you're combining the signal and forming an average or a median. So this comet master shouldn't have much more data or brightness than it is in each of the subs because you're doing a median. Well, it keeps it as a tracking as a record someplace. So it could be. This is 10 images. Or keeps it as a tracking somewhere and somehow reduces it. I've never read in, in, uh, in, uh, in the books that I use that that's what it does, but it doesn't seem to matter. It, whatever, whatever it does, it works. Um, let me just show you a few few sample pictures of comets that I've taken. This is an interesting one. It's Comet Hartley 2, ten, five, ten, five to ten years ago. Um, this is the, the, com the pictures of the comet, the subs of the comet aligned on the stars, and you see the head of the comet moving across, the nucleus of the comet moving across the image. Um, but if you process, and this is long before, this is Photoshop processing, this is not PixInsight. This is the one you saw before, lined on the stars, average combined, um, so you're averaging the signal and the averaging the, the um, pixel strength in each of the images. You get the, the comet nucleus, the comet head moving. And if I did it on, let's do this one first. If I did it, if I aligned on the head of the comet, here I aligned on the stars. Here I'm aligning on the head of the comet. So the comet's in one place, but the stars are moving, which is the fundamental problem with processing most things. But now I'm going to do a median combine. I'm going to take and, and align on the head of the comet, but I'm going to do a median combine. Median combine rejects, doesn't include in the final image pixels that are, uh, data that are in more than one, in, I'm sorry, are in only, it doesn't include data that are only in one of the images. It says that's a piece of noise, I want to reject it. So you see the stars are basically suppressed and I just have the head of the comet. There's still some residual stars that you can see, so it's not a perfect process, but it does work better if you just, if you just want to use something like Photoshop. On the other hand, if I fix on the stars and do a median combine, it's hard to see, but you can see the, nu the line that shows the nucleus of the comet basically disappears because it's not in every picture. So this shows you the different processing of average versus median, stars versus whatever, stars versus comet alignment. And that's basically the way I tried doing it before, to get something like this but this works better. I've been doing comet process, comet imaging for a long time. If you guys remember Hale Bopp, I was out there on a golf course with a, hand, with a homemade um, barn door tracking mount. My daughter was calling out the time with the stopwatch and I'm turning the wheel trying to keep the thing rotating right. And I got a, I mean this is a print image that I took a scan of, but I got a pretty decent image of Hale Bopp and the Pleiades. It was fun. Uh, comet Catalina, again, lined on the comet. Stars are trailing. This is Comet Ison. You remember that one? It was supposed to be a really, be really beautiful comet. And on Thanksgiving Day, it went around the sun and burnt up, and disappeared. We never saw it again. This is Comet Panstars, one of many discovered by them. Uh, this is Comet Lovejoy. This is the one I'm going to do the demonstration on. I liked it because we had some nice structure in the tail. Again, you have movement of the comet of the stars, but it, it turns out to be a pretty comet. And then, of course, this is Wharton, in which I just showed you with a single comet with, with pinpoint stars. Okay, I'm going to stop for a second. And not stop, but I'm going to keep going. And these are, uh, these are the slides that I'm going to give you in a handout. And it's basically a one-page summary of the processing steps. If you could take, take one and pass those on. I think there's enough for everybody. This is a one-page. If you don't want them, just pass them forward and we'll t collect them later. This is a, a one page, both sides, four slides, both sides, uh, summary of the steps that it takes to process the comet. 
Now, as I said before, the problem I have, I'm creating multiple sets of comet images that have had something done to them. And it's hard for me to keep track of which set of images I'm supposed to process this on. This will help, but also putting the images into separate folders appropriately labeled will also help. I'm not going to go through this other than to show it for a short period of time so that we can have this handout on the video. Um, so the first part was you're integrating, you're immigrating, immigrating, integrating the comet. Now you want to isolate the comet as step two. And then you want to save it as a comet master. Part, star master part one, you want to subtract the comet from each of the subs. Um, and then finally load that, you want to subtract, and then finally save that. Um, where is it? Save that comet mass. Uh, I'm sorry, save that as a comet master. I'm sorry, as a. There we go, star master. Save it as star master, and then use the clone stamp to clean things up, and then save them uh, using PixInsight. Sorry, we're using pixel math to superimpose one over the other. So this is the process we're going to follow here in the demonstration. And this is basically just a handout to get us through that. Um, I'm not going to talk through these, but this is a, let me just fast forward because it's basically just a summary of what I just said. And that's the end of this slideshow. Okay, let's go to here. Now I'm going to sit and we will process. Before I brought you here, or before you came here, um, I did some work to get ready. I told you I'm not going to show you how to align stars and integrate them. I'm sorry, register them. Register and align are used interchangeably, I think, in PixInsight. I'm not going to show you how to do that. I assume you know how to do that because you have to do that with every uh, astronomic astronomy, images, astronomy image that you use for PixInsight. One of the problems I always have is my colors. And we're just going to leave it green for right now. I can use this screen transfer function to get rid of colors, but that's not, that's one, something you have to do with everything, every comment, every picture that you make, so I'm not going to do that now. We'll do that at the end and kind of clean it up. It doesn't seem to matter <laughs> if you leave it green. So what I've done is I've loaded the star registered image subs into Blink. And let me make this a little bigger. Oops, one more. No, that was the right one. And I'm just going to play this, and you'll see how the stars are in, in a fixed place and the comet moves. At least I hope that's what you'll see. Yeah, there we go. And you'll notice some of these had clouds, and some, there's only five images. The original set had something like 20. Um, but you'll notice the, there were clouds in some, the exposures are different, but you'll see the comet is stepping across the screen. Right, the tail is, the, the, the comet was, the, the, the tail is not always headed in the direction in which the comet is moving. I think that's what you said. It's heading away from the sun. So as this thing is orbiting around the sun, the comet is, is anti-solar. So let's just stop these. And I'm going to get rid of the files in Blink. We'll be using that a couple of times. So according to our, our list here, um, register calibrated cosmetically corrected subs, batch, press, uh, batch processing or star alignment. You can use those things to do that. Um, so that's what I've done. So we want to then open the comet alignment process, add the aligned registered subs. So we go to process. Comet, Comet Alignment. We want to add our files. Now, this, these are the red, are the star, are the images you just saw. It's in a folder called Calibrated and Debired. That's the steps that have to be done to get to here. And then I've registered them on the stars. So these are the, and you know, you can tell that's calibrated. C, D is debired, and R is registered. That automatically added by Photoshop. So we're going to add all these to our image, I mean to our process. It opens them up, says it's ready. So I'm going to then double click on the first image. And it needs to be stretched. So we'll stretch it. 
that needs to be enlarged because we want to get an accurate position on the head of the comet, on the nucleus. Now, when I put the cursor over this, it doesn't show me anything, but if I put it over, you'll notice it's a white, and then it turns to black because the reverse image is black. And I'm going to put that over the nucleus as far as close as I can make it of the comet, and I'm going to click a button. So there you see a green circle and a smaller green circle within it. That tells you that it now knows where the head of the comet is on this image. That's the first image. We'll do the same thing. Whoops. Do the same thing on the last image. Stretch it. Zoom. <coughs> Bless you. Again, put the cursor over the comet and click on it and, it and it registers the position of the comet. Now, just want to show you down here under parameters, here it's showing you the position of the first and last comet and it shows you the dx, dy, the motion of the comet as it's crossing the field. So it, because the time of the, p of the image is recorded in the, in the data of the image, it now knows where the first comet is, where the last comet is, and interpolates and knows where every image on the comet is and, and should be. So I'm going to find an output. Uh, Sir? You, you said there's two green circles. Uh, there's a dot, and, and that's, it's, it's actually a circle. On other images that I've done, um, the comet nucleus isn't as distinct as this is, and so the center circle is larger. Okay, so it actually does measure best it can the location of the comet. I don't know if I clicked it out here if it would find the, find this, the comet. I've never tried that. But it, uh, there is actually two circles. The, the question was he only sees a circle and a dot. And just trust me that it's actually a circle showing you where it thinks the nucleus of the comet is, the head of the comet. Okay, so we're going to find an output location. What it's going to do, it's going to take each of the subs that we have added here, and it's going to register it on the location of the comet. It's going to register all the points where it thinks the comet is in that image, and it's going to put those all in the same place on the image. So um, I'm going to do something here just so I don't confuse everybody later on. I'm going to create a new folder. called demo. That, well, we'll have to deal with that. And then I'm going to create a new folder, another folder, new folder called Comet Aligned. I keep forgetting to undo that, but that's okay. It'll keep us from remembering I mean, from getting confused by the old one and the new one. So I've selected the folder where I want them to go. You'll notice this field here called subtract is empty. I'm not yet subtracting anything. So I'm going to shorten that up. The parameters we talked about earlier are generated by the position of the comets. I have my output right. I'm not subtracting anything. Interpolation is fine. We don't have any interpolation. And so now I just click, what is that, execute or go, or I never understood what the various buttons mean. So what it's doing now is it's taking each of the images and putting the location where the comet is over all of the subs. Just stacking them up. Or I'm sorry, it's not stacking them, it's just aligning them. But when I'm doing this, I'm also getting the stars that are trailing. I'm getting individual locations for the stars at different positions for each image. So here we are, we've got those things done. So I'm just going to close that up and move it over. By the way, now once I've identified the circles, I could have done it earlier. Once I identify the circles, I can get rid of these. Don't need those anymore. So add the star aligned. Okay, select the first sub, uh, center the green circle, uh, apply globally. If you want, we can blink to confirm. How are we doing on time? Okay. demo. So here's our comet aligned subs. We want to open those up and blink. I 
I hope the color, green color isn't throwing anybody off. That's just the fact that I'm not as familiar with screen, screen, screen transfer functions as I should be. And I'm always afraid to do stuff that I'm going to throw it out of linearity. Okay, so let's look here. We have the comet here. And the stars, you can see, are moving behind it. So we've, we've done a good job. They're now stretched. The, comets are in, the stars are in different positions, but the comet is in the same position. Okay, so we'll stop that. We'll un unload the images. If you leave those open, by the way, it's just sucking up memory in your computer. And I found that if I do that a number of times, I'm running out of memory in my computer. So it's a good idea just to delete them from your Blink. All right, so we're on the Comet Master Part 1, Blink, Comet Aligned Images, if needed to confirm uh, we're on alignment. So now we Comet Integrates. So we want to isolate the Comet. So we now open com Image Integration. HI image integration. We want to add our files. This is comet aligned. These are the ones we want to add. Open that up. Now we want to look at some things here. And this image integration, typically I've not had to change anything. These are things you can all play with and, and just figure out if you if you need to refine tune <coughs> the result. That's one one area of fine tuning you can do. The other is pixel rejection. Um, this node here right now it opens up now as pixel re rejection and the rejection algorithm you use is based on the number of images that you have being aligned being yeah being uh, integrated rather and uh, if I take my curve let me just stand up and do this if you have a lot of images Windsor Sigma Windsorized sigma clipping is, is a good idea. The notes describe when to use what. If you have a lot of images, like over 10 or 15, Windsor sigma clipping is good. But when you only have three to, three to six images, it uses a different algorithm to combine them. And so that's what we'll use. Different things are suitable for different, um, seri different situations where you have different number of images or different things. So, but for right now, we'll keep it to percentile clipping. I'm going to go down to here. Whoops. Open up percentile clipping. Um, and these default ranges seem to be pretty good for the things that I've used. You may want to try out different things. If you're not getting good enough rejection of the stars, you can play with some of this stuff. I tend not to play with it very much. Uh, they do tell you in, in, um, in the book, um, Picks Insight, Inside Picks Insight, What's the guy's name? Um, Warren Keller. Thank you. Oh, good. You guys know it. Preaching to the choir. <laughs> um, they they do tell you, give you some hints as to to adjust some of these to get better rejection. You lower, I think, lower the high to get better rejection. But again, do that on an iterative basis, and s when you see what if you're not happy with what you're getting. So let's close that up. Pixel rejection three. I don't ever use large scale pixel rejection. We don't use and region of interest. So now they're going to, when I process this, it's going to integrate all those images. It's going to get rid of the stars because they're not in every image, but it's going to keep the comet. That's the suggestion anyway. Now this does take a few minutes. That's why isn't the reason I'm only doing five images as opposed to the 20, because it does take a while. Any questions so far? So is the region of interest, if you selected that, would you be able to go in and just um, select the I've never tried it, but I think that's usually what region of interest means in other applications where I have used it. Um, so I, I'd have to agree with you. That's likely what it does. I've never, I never used it. So that is what it is. We have a, the question is on region of interest, this area over here, if we were to select uh, the region of interest that you're interested in that you want considered in this process, uh, you can identify that region and it would only use that region to, to do the calculations. As I say, I've never done that before, but that region of interest function works the same way. I'm assuming it works the same way as in other uh, processes where you use the, the region of interest comment, com um, feature. So it's still working. This is an older laptop. It's uh, an i5 chip, so it's not the fastest thing in the world. And, and I think I have it running um, to a file if it needs, I mean, to a folder to 
to the hard drive if it needs it. That's probably what's taking. Okay, so we're down the last couple of steps, integrating the one channel of three, two channels of three, when we get finished with the third channel of three, we'll be able to see what happened. Now, if this works out well, this will become our Comet Master, okay, the one that we're going to bring in later on. And if it doesn't work out well, I don't think I know what to do to fix it. So we're <laughs> go back and play with some of those settings when you have more time. Anybody else got any questions? And if any of you who do pick sites, pixel, picks inside better than I do, which is not hard, um, please offer suggestions on, for example, how to fix color. So John Kroon was telling me that over here, the square is not in this one. That's a local execution, and the circle is a global execution. The difference between those two is a little fuzzy to me, except local, I imagine, is the picture you're operating on, and global is all of the images you have open. Okay. All right, so let's look at, the, uh, let's look at this one. This is the first one shows you the pixels that were rejected. Now, I don't know if you can see this on the screen, but I'm going to boost the, boost the, um, so these are the pixels that rejected, and you can see it's basically the star pattern of the stars that we had. So that's good news, okay? We'll get rid of that. And this is the low pixels that reject were rejected, and I don't think we did any, we had any problems with low pixels, so that basically looks blank. No low pixels, or almost no low pixels were rejected. So here we are, good news, we can see a comet head here. We will, Expand it, and again, it's very green. We've got a little star pattern here, um, but that's about it. That may be the only thing we have to create. The other interesting thing is that you're seeing, still seeing the tail structure. I don't know whether you can see that on the TV, but you're still seeing the tail structure on this image, and it's a little hard to see because of the green and the way it's, it's being portrayed, but that's the way to do it. Okay, so now we are ready We've gone through part two, uh, clipping factor, adjust, repeat, save as Comet Master. So we're going to identify, they're going to select that, we're going to file, save as. And you want to make sure it's saving as an XF file. I had, it, I had it saving once as a TIFF file because I had saved something else to, be, to, to show somewhere else. And it defaulted to a TIFF file and that was not working and it took me a long time to figure what's out, what was happening. So let's take that C O M E T. M-A-S-T-E-R. So there's our Comet Master. And we're in the Comet Aligned folder, so I'm just going to put the Comet Master into the Comet Aligned folder. That seems to make sense to me. We'll, s we'll say OK. OK, let's turn the page over and go to Star Processing. Star Processing. First of all, first thing we want to do is uh, remove the stars. So we want to go back to the Comet Alignment process. Now, it turns out you want to load the original images that you did originally that were aligned and integrated, but they just happen to still be here because we're, you know, we're, we're using them again. So we want to come down here and we want to click on the first one. Let's get this out of the way. Do uh, STF. And it, we still have the circle around the head of the comet. I'm going to click on the last one, and we still have the circle around the head of the comet. So these data, this, these settings are still good. Um, so I want to come down to output, and we're going to put these individual pictures in not the comet aligned folder. We're going to add a new folder and put that. What are we going to call this one? because we've taken all these pictures and we're aligning them on the stars. So you open that. We'll come down here to parameters. We'll see that those parameters are the same ones we saw before for the position and motion of the comet. Now here's where we get a little bit different. We're gonna open and put an image in the subtract
function, and that's the same. That's the common image that you want to subtract from every of each one of the subs. So we're going to open this up and demo comet aligned comet master. We're going to put the comet master in there, and you notice down here you you, you say you got to tell it that it's comet aligned, and that you want to integrate the image and so. You it's just basically so that it knows what you want to do with the image. I've never had to play with the reject high, reject low, because it seems to work pretty close. Maybe if I want to do a fine tuning, it can. And the interpolation seems fine. So John, you're saying, oh wait, I can, I can close these. These are the first and last images, so I can close those. And so we're going to do a global. Is that what you're saying? Do a global, and now it's going to work on all those all those and it's going to align them on, uh, it's going to remove the comet from each sub and then align it on, align this, no it won't align, it's just going to remove the comet from each sub. And you'll see sometimes that works well, sometimes it leaves some residual. Um, by the time you align all of these things, the residual pretty much disappears. Um, it's not a a uh, hard and fast thing. Again, iteratively, you may want to go back and clean up some of this with uh, cloning or, or um, some other some other technique. To get rid of the green automatic background inspector, one more time, please. To get rid of the green in the background, to automatic background extractor, and dynamic, dynamic background. Um, there's a way to use screen, uh, screen transfer function too, and you know, these are the kind of details of PixInsight that I'm struggling to remember to do, and, and can't remember what each of that tool in the toolbox looks for. When I when I try and use PixInsight, it's like to me, it's like taking a toolbox, dumping it on the table, and saying, "Go build a house." You know, you don't know how to use this hammer, you don't know how to use this caliper, but you're going to use it to go build a house. And I'm still in the process of trying to figure out what this caliper does on the same spot. So it's a matter of repetition, and I don't repeat it often enough. That's my problem. Um, I have a whole, um, I have a whole, several CD or hard disks full of data from previous things that I've done, and I could spend hours and hours and hours applying that and using it and making my pictures look better. I just don't find the time to do that. It's my fault. But I do go to the Byron Berger Astronomy Astrophotography Conference or meeting. It's held every two weeks. Kevin Quinn um, is kind of the lead of that, and there's usually a dozen or two people, dozen or two dozen people that show up to that, and there's always people with demonstrating what they've done and showing you good ideas, and it's, I would highly recommend you go to that, and Kevin Quinn puts out a, um, uh, an email about that on the listserv. So here we are. We've got all these things identified. So we'll come down here, subtract the location, linear fit, blink to confirm. So we can blink to confirm if we want. Uh, open the files. Come back up here. Do star aligned. Identify all these. Open them up. So hopefully by now you're hearing it three or four times the process flow, the flow of the work that has to happen. Hopefully that's working for you. So again, let's just, you'll notice the comet was over here. This has a little bit of the residual in the comet, but not much. And as we flick through it, you can see some cases it's taken out more, some take its case now taken out less. It's a little bit of residual left over, but I think that's probably due to the fact that each of these images have different um, background levels. So it's subtracting the same comet from each one, and, and so sometimes it doesn't take enough, sometimes it takes more. So that's it, that's that. So it's, the stars are all aligned, the comet's pretty much gone, and so we're ready to go. We'll stop that and we'll get rid of those. And now we will do image integration. Did I leave that open? No, I didn't. Process, image integration. Let's make sure it's on our list, star isolation. Um, so, designate different folders, subtract, link to confirm. So we're now on, on the Star Master page, or page part two. Open image integration, image integration, load the files, and apply F6 to save as Star Master. So we want to clear that. 
We want to add the files we just created. And this is star aligned. Come down here, load all those. Open it up. And I don't think we want to do anything with these. Um, this is again already set to percent or clipping. You might want to use another method if you have a different number of stars, a different number of subs rather. Pixel rejection, we may need to uh, play with that at some point in the future, but it's not really in the scope of what we're doing here. So we're going to try it, make it happen. Now we should be getting our star master, integrating all of those subs that have just the stars and no comet. I just think it's really clever and creative how they have figured out to subtract the comet image, the comet data from each of the subs. I think that's a really a, a clever approach. I mean, I've tried doing it with meeting combines and it doesn't work anywhere near as well. Any other questions so far? Here's where my singing talents should come in. I should serenade you with something. But I'm not going to do that. It's, it's off topic. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, you can imagine how long this takes when you have 18 or 20 images out there, or more. Okay. Showing progress. Channel 1. Channel 2. And channel three. I tried practicing this demo Friday, no, Saturday night. I was so tog tired I could not keep straight my A's from my B's and my this. I mean, I just, I was just so tired I couldn't do it. So I quit and went to bed. But uh, yesterday it worked, worked much better because I was awake. Mm. It's true. I probably should have just chosen, chosen three images. <laughs> but this works better. Okay, there they are. So let's look at our rejection. I'm going to do a high... So it's rejecting those things with have the c which had the comet in it. Um, low rejection, there shouldn't be much of anything, and there's not. And so here is our new star master. And what do you know? It's got stars in it and no comet. So it worked pretty well. I keep looking at this thing up here, but it turns out that's on my screen. Anyway, <laughs> um, it looks pretty good. Let's, uh, no, let's not do it yet. Um, so I'm going to file, save as, and I am in the co comet aligned, I want to be in the star aligned, and I'm going to go, yes, I am the star master. Okay. So we now have our star master and our, our um, comet master. So now we want to um, use pixel math. And we want to use pixel math to combine them. So first thing I want to do is open this, the Comet Master. Demo, Comet Aligned, Comet Master. So I've got them both open. I'm going to close this now. And now we're going to open up pixel math. Uh, pixel math, there we are. And I like using the expression editor because I'm basically lazy. So we have Comet Master. 
Um, oh, you know what? Let me get out of that for now. Um, this is the Star Master is, is basically called integration because I didn't I saved it, but I didn't open it as Star Master. So I want to go back here, star lined, open Star Master. Now I have the two two fi two files I would recognize. Anybody use Pixel Math much? Can I just type in the name Star Master and okay, let's try it. Are they case sensitive? Allow me to do that? Yeah, it will. Okay. Star Master. Now, in the book, he also talks about possible, possibly using two-star two Comet Master and doubling the effect of the Comet. I'm not going to do that here because I don't think it needs it, but in some cases, you might want to play with Pixel Math and do a different thing. And so now we're going to do Apply. Okay. These buttons often do the same thing, so I'm not sure. Now, the reason it's all white is because we did that to the stretched functions. We're going to get rid of the stretch, and we're going to restretch it. And here you see individual stars and an individual comet. No streaking, no um, trailing stars, no nothing. So this is now our comet master, I mean our, our image. Save as, we'll go back up to demo. And save it as I don't love your demo. Okay, now this is the part that I'm not going to talk too much about of how to get it green or red or whatever it is. You can use b uh, background extraction techniques. Um, do we have time? We've got about 10 minutes or so. You want to sure. try that? Let's go back. So we want to use what? You want DBE or? Okay. Automatic background extraction. Okay. You want to help with settings or just, just, just go ahead and do it? For those of you who are having a hard time seeing that, we've chosen the correction factor as subtraction. And we're discarding the background model. So we don't care what the background model looks like. We're just getting rid of it. All right. We'll try that. Here's our new, stretch it, and lo and behold, we have a nice image. Wow, I like that reaction. <laughs> um, all right, how do I get back to... Can you speak a little louder? I can't hear you. I somehow, I, and when I maximize this one. Let's try cascading them. There we go. I'll try demo, star master. There it is. Okay. So, again, we don't see any residual from the, from the comments. We don't see much residual from the stars. If I do a, a ex, ex, an extreme expand, you can see there is some star trailing, some star residuals, but um, I'm guessing that with the proper processing and, and, and expansion of and stretching and linearity and stuff like that, you wouldn't be able to see much. This star here does seem to give us problems. 
um, because it does show up in the Comet Master. You can see it here. If you want, we can use clone. Clone stamp. Uh, so, or yeah. Louder, please. Also true. So with more subs, she says that would probably be less of a problem in the image. There's a lot of settings that you can go back and t tweak with and play with if you have the time and the energy and the knowledge and stuff, and I would recommend you do that. But what I like about it is it's, it's a relatively straightforward process. You just, just follow the steps, keep track of your images, because it's real easy to use one set of images that, that not, and not the right ones, and <coughs> that messes everything up. Keep track of your <coughs> images, and it, and it gives you a really straightforward way of getting a comet placed right on your star field and, and makes a, a, a pleasant image. Any other questions? How long were your subs? Oh, um, how would I find that out? Wh one? Fitz process? Fitz header, there it is. And I got to select. Okay. I'm Look at the original. So let's open one of the originals. And where would I have that? Load. Open. No, I don't want to open recent. There it is. Yeah, but what I do have, these are the comet debayer, these are the original the original debayered. So they would probably have more of the image. So I want to select that one. Okay. Let's find where that would be. Sorry, pardon me? 60, 60 seconds. seconds. Exposure time, ISO 64, 640. So, um, doesn't take long. And this was probably taken with my, with my 5D Mark II and also on my Tech 160. It's 160 millimeter APO. Um, and that's the way it goes. Any questions? Let's Close all, no, close. Well, we'll figure out how to do that later. <coughs> Thanks for listening. I hope it works for you. Um, I actually slowed them, I showed them during. I can show them now if you just want to paste them in or you can cut and paste it till later. Okay. You're